Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Louis D'Souza. Today is Monday, December the 2nd, 2019. It is 4 p.m. in New York, but wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today. Your daily dose of happy. We're back after a Thanksgiving break. And uh, I think people are kind of ready for us, Louie, because they were watching or rather listening to uh, us in record numbers. And then we didn't do any shows for a few days and the numbers started to fall off and fall off. So you can just tell they're waiting for the next episode. So so this is timely. This is a good episode, to do, right? <laughs> Excellent. Welcome to the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, we got an email through the website. It wasn't an email. It was actually a comment on the LOAToday.net website from a listener who found us through PRN, which is an online radio station in New York City that uh, LOA Today kind of got its start on. And we still do um, one of our uh, shows each week on the 7 p.m. time slot on Thursdays. And uh, we also air some of our other episodes later on in the evening there. Um, but uh, one of our one of the listeners there tuned in and, and sent a note through the LOA Today page and said... Uh, that it's a great show you guys have and such a breath of fresh air on PRN where the focus is generally on what's wrong than what's right, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> and with that thought in mind, he says, it occurs to me as the shows discuss and make more alive and more apparently present subjects like global warming, for example, and as people become more aware of it and more convinced it is an ever more present threat, he asks, are we participating or manifesting the very thing we fear? So thank you, Jim, first of all, for sending that question. That was a great question. I, I did send him a, uh, an email response, but I figured that's a good way to start uh, talking about things today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Louie. What, what do you think is the best way to answer Jeff's question there? Uh, run the question by me and for the listeners again. Let's just go through that quick. All right. So he says um, with, when you have topics like uh, global warming or various unpleasant topics that get discussed on shows uh, which happens so often on PRN. And, and we even talk about stuff here on this show that uh, the topic is initially for many people an unpleasant topic, but uh, we either pivot around or we, we look at it from different viewpoints and so forth, and ultimately we end up with something that's a, that I think is a more positive viewpoint. Uh, but he, he raises the question, so what happens if we're, if we're continuing to focus on these things? Are we going to be manifesting more and more bad stuff, stuff that we fear? So... I have a good friend who was a member of Greenpeace, mm -hmm. and she was often talking about save the planet, do this, do that, you know, we've got to cut back on this and do that, and, you know, going on and on and on about thousands, save the rainforests, and so it was going on and on. And uh, slowly but surely over the years, I managed to share with her the law of attraction. And... Uh, it was interesting because eventually I said to her, you know, it's not so easy to say this to somebody right in the beginning, mm -hmm. but I said to her, you know, one person in alignment is more powerful than millions that aren't. So if a few of us got together and like they do with these group meditations she was into, and they focused on what they wanted with the planet and how it can turn out and, and sort itself out, then, you know, you know, one person in alignment is more powerful than millions that aren't. So, you know, would, would, how, how long would it take to sort the whole planet out of all its problems? Good if, question. let's say, 500,000 of us got together on one day and focused on what we wanted for the planet and not what we didn't want. Well, that'd be pretty quick, I would think. Exactly. Now, when people get to that understanding, you can understand it. You, you've seen it. You understand the law of attraction. You've, you've played with it. We've discussed it on numerous occasions. You, you know, you've been having podcasts for six years on the subject. You, you understand that that is a, that is a feasible possibility. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't get that. Right. So literally, we can turn the planet around like that. What's there to worry about? A game over. I don't even have anything else to say on the subject. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it does get pretty quick when you look at it that way. Um, and, and I've also, to kind of uh, throw in with what you're talking about there, um, you mentioned how it was not something you could bring up early on in the relationship with this woman who was in Greensby's. Um, and... I've run into the same thing. I've experienced it with a lot of people who are politically active in one way or another, 
any, any side of the divide. I don't care which side you're looking at, but it's always the same pattern of they're get, they're so locked in to how terrible something is or how bad the other side is or you know any anything that they don't like. They're just you know they go mm-hmm. on and on not on about it. They, they're so locked into it that even if you come in from the viewpoint, and I actually tried this as an experiment lately, even if you come in from the viewpoint that yes, I share your viewpoint with you, so now you know I'm on your side, right? And then introduce the idea that, well, the way we're thinking about this is actually influencing it. What I found is you get responses like, well, that's that's really nice, but let's deal with the real world here. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a very strong resistance. That's my point. There's a very, very strong resistance, even when somebody is feeling sympathetic to you, um, toward what we talk about here, simply because, I think it's because the, what you and I would call the vibration of it is so far out from where they are right now that, yeah, the words sound good, but it can't possibly be true. That That's what it feels like when you're in that place that they're in. And mm-hmm. it's an interesting thing to keep in mind that people who are fighting, who are you know working on a political angle or, or trying to change the world or something like that are in almost all cases, they're in a place where they're not feeling good. Mm. And they're so not feeling good that they will strive to fight for it. Mm. They will actually struggle to stay in that place. Kindly, if you're kind to them. But nevertheless, they will struggle to stay in that place. And, and I just find it a fascinating phenomenon now that I've been studying Law of Attraction for a while. Mm-hmm. Because back, you know, when I was, kind of, I've been in that same place that they're in. And when I was in that place, I would have thought that would not be true. If, if I thought that there was some kind of way to make things all better... I would have thought everybody would have just gone for it, but now I know different. <laughs> People will not necessarily go for it. They'll just, well, they'll just stay with their pattern. The, the big thing, Walt, is we didn't come to the physical universe not to play with the contrast. Yeah, that's true. If we didn't want to play with the contrast, if we wanted to be pure, positive, loving, kind, peaceful planet, we wouldn't have come here. We would have stayed in the non-physical where it is all pure, positive all the time. Yeah. So you've got to understand the perfection of being out of the vortex. <laughs> That's an interesting phrase. <laughs> the beauty of it, the, the, the design of it, the mechanism of it, the, the creativity of it, the expansion of it, you know, until people get that, they, they just don't get much. Um, it, it's such a beautiful game that you start playing. You start realizing, oh, my God. You know, every time I'm going through some negative emotion or something I don't want, it's helping me. It's expanding me. It's it's beautiful. You know, wow. I mean, that's why I came here. I came to play with all this stuff. So play with it. So there's there's something Ramdas once said that um, one of these non-physical entities, the biggest the biggest gift, the biggest um, piece of information that he ever got from one of these channeled individuals like Abram X. Okay, that was long before Abram Hicks' time, mm-hmm. um, was that, uh, you know, Ramdas, you're in school, take the curriculum. <laughs> and, you know, it struck a chord in me. And when Abram Hicks came around and explained the importance of the negativity and the expansion part, then it all fell into place what the ghost was saying, <laughs> what the non-physical entity was saying. Right. You know, you're in, you're in the contrasting universe. You're in school. You're in the physical universe. You're in that contrasting universe. Play with it. Play with the contrast. You know, some people say, oh, let's go make us beautiful um, piece of area where we can all live in harmony together and forget the rest of the world and all the rest of it. Now, let's say they managed it and they were all peaceful all the time. They wouldn't know they were peaceful, would they? Because there's no contrast. Well, I'm not sure if they would not know at all, because if they came from a contrast area into a non-contrast area, unless they forgot about the contrast area, Mm -hmm. you know, they they would... then if they over over that, time, if, 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 the, yeah. if the group lasted long enough that a lot of the old memories faded and they were always in pure happiness, they, they wouldn't appreciate it. There would be no appreciation because you need contrast to understand where you're at. So, so an interesting question then. Let's assume a, a society, a mini society kind of breaks off like that, exists for a long enough time that it forgets where it came from and it doesn't have that sense of of a contrast where peace is concerned so what happens do they stay what they would consider to be peaceful do they start developing their own contrast what do you think 
Well, I've been to a lot of these groups, <laughs> um, <laughs> Horn, et cetera, et cetera, and I promise you there's nothing peaceful about them at all. <laughs> <laughs> they do not manage to create peace in these peaceful environments, I promise you. <laughs> this person wants that, and that person's got this, and I need that, and you have that, and I want this, and it doesn't matter where you are, it's the same thing over and over again. Um, so until you understand alignment, until you understand what you should be doing, and is, is, is creating your own reality and playing with your own contrast and living your own life and not be putting your nose too much in other people's business, well, not at all, ideally, um, then you kind of understand eventually what, where you're going, what you want to do. First of all, you never stop playing with contrast. You enjoy it. You find the greatest spice in life is when you're like, freaking depressed because you know that you can get ecstatically happy on the other side where you get people like me that doesn't have too much of a, you know, a volatility. So I don't get that incredible wowness that some people do, but I, I'm, I'm fairly stable most of the time. So I, I, I envy those guys that can go down into depression because I know that there's a height in there that they can go to, which I will probably never be able to go to. Or, you know, that's putting limitations on myself. But, you know, you get the idea of what I'm saying. is different people play the game differently and they have different mm -hmm. experiences. And you can all, you know, I'm not saying that because I'm fairly stable, I'm always stable. It's not true. Never will be. Any, you know, I have my ups and downs. They're just not too massive. And, and that's um, very, that, that's interesting. It's it's a completely different wording and a way of different way of expressing it. But it's it's essentially what I wrote to him because what I wrote to him was there is no one way to deal with a topic. I mean, uh, for one person, global warming is a good thing. For another person, it's a bad thing. For another person, it's global cooling that's the good thing. For for another person, it, global warming or cooling is irrelevant. It's just what's the environment like. For that person, maybe it's, uh, well, they just want to have a temperate environment, but somebody else wants to go to where Jeff, the guy who wrote this is. Right now, he's in northeastern India, Sikkim, the Sikkim region, heading toward Nepal in the Himalayas. I mean, that's a completely different environment from the one I'm in right now. Even though we have about two inches of snow on the ground, nothing like what there is in the Himalayas right now. You know, I mean, just completely different environments. Now, is one environment better than the other? Depends on your viewpoint. <laughs> it just depends. So everybody's going to have a different answer as to what their environment is that they want to be. The, the important thing, from my perspective, is picking the one that you want and focusing on that if you want to change the environment, because then you'll get a different environment. I must admit, about 16 years ago, I went to Taiwan, and I completely agree with you. There are other places on this planet that seem so completely, completely, completely different to the way we live that I would have sworn I was on another planet. You know? <laughs> you know, there was not an English word anywhere. Right. Hardly anybody can speak English. Everybody was like riding these little mopeds around the place. I slept on the most horrendous type bed, etc. Mm. You know, um, you, the, the toilets were holes in the ground where you're squatted next to each other. And, right. You, you know, you just, you just really would have sworn you're not on the same planet. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying some of them didn't have proper toilets, but these were the public ones. But, uh, you know, you, you really get that feeling that, that, that it's another planet. But it's just different people playing with different contrast. And you start realizing that there are base core similarities across the board. Mm -hmm. Rich, poor, left wing, right wing. <laughs> <laughs> for Trump against Trump. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but we're all playing with contrast. And the sooner you get to understand that you're creating your reality is you get to that place of empowerment. You get to that place of, of excitement. You get to that place of manifesting quicker and easier. You get to that place of spending more time in a happier place. You spend a lot less time torturing yourself. You, you spend um, time stilling your mind and, 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 and aligning with core, which brings in even more of that power through. Mm -hmm. And you get to that place where you're just so at peace with everything um, that when you're out of the vortex, which you do even when you get to those places, because nobody's ever stayed enlightened in any of the master or guru books or anything that I've ever read, and I've read millions of them, 
Um, none of them have ever stayed in their enlightenment, enlightenment stage. None of them. And if they do, then they, they croak. <laughs> <laughs> Poor um, Abraham Hicks' favorite term for dying. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's... It's really important to to understand a, a few things about the law of attraction. Number one, the law of attraction is a universal law that expands thought. It expands thought through attraction, and it attracts like vibrations. And that is really the simplicity of it all. If you understand that, you now say, well, if I focus on what I want, then that's a vibration. Then the universal law of attraction is going to draw me more of that. And if I focus on what I hate, dislike, don't want, it's going to pick up that vibration and give me more of that. And it's so simple. It's just like, okay, so now I've got the law of attraction down. I, I don't even know how I've been talking on the law of attraction f- for how many years, about a year now, Walt. And I just say the same things again and again. I mean, <laughs> people must be so bored with me. <laughs> I try to say them in slightly different ways, but it's just the the principle is so simple. But I find that if I don't tend to repeat it, people don't tend to get it. They they fall back to the old way of thinking. So it's been immensely beneficial to those around me, my endless saying it again and again and keep the the clarity there for everybody else. And, I've really seen it being extremely beneficial to those around me. Um, and the longer the people spend in my environment, the, the longer they get hammered over the head with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, at least we know what we're getting into. <laughs> well, you know, my, my wife now hammers me over the head whenever I get into one of those negative places. But, yeah, and she just says my own words back to me, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> where you can't get, get away with anything anymore, right? No, and that's what everybody else says, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate it because, you know, I'm not always in alignment. And when I'm out of alignment, it's good to get that little kick. Oh, I was focusing on what I didn't want, and I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. So now you've hit me in the face. I've got it. Now I'm moving forward. So I could also take umbrage over that. Oh, yeah, easily. I could, but I wouldn't be living up to my own teaching. I wouldn't be, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be a product of the product, uh, you know. So, well, you it, probably also wouldn't be living the life you want to live. Be, exactly. Because you, it's clear which life you want to live. You've been living it. I'm, I'm watching my daughter come in here and say, we've got some new guests today, some very good old friends of mine, spiritual um, travelers in my life, and they, mm-hmm. they're gorgeous people. Um and we were talking a bit about the law of attraction as well and all the rest. We were having some great chats. Um, <clears throat> but my daughter comes in bounding and says, oh, we've got new this and new that and new the other. And, and, like, and she's so excited about all these new things that are happening in our house sure. and our life and all the rest of it. And, 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 and she's bounding off the wall with them all. Mm. And it's so nice to feel that excitement with, with everything. Um, Absolutely. And to have a ripple effect around your house and have everybody talking about it. There, there is nobody who truly gets joy like a child. Exactly. They, they get it better than anybody. <laughs> and they demonstrate it every single day, often to the frustration of parents, but nevertheless, they demonstrate it every single day. I know. My, my daughter's vibration was so high, I actually had to walk away from her because it was... When you're out of sync with somebody who's at a higher vibration, it kind of feels burny. You kind of feel like mm-hmm. you're getting a bit burnt. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, I'm realizing for what it is, she's got a higher vibration for me, but I don't like the idea too much, you know. My ego gets in the way. <laughs> you know, I should be up there too, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh... So, you, you, you know, there's so many ways that you, you get umbrage and you, you, can, you can feel, um, you know, not so aligned. But, you know, if, if you gain the awareness that, oh, this is expanding me, this is helping me be a cl- clearer of what I do want, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I was always at that vibration my daughter is? Mm. It, it gets exciting. It's like, it wow, you know. Yeah. And we could be flying up there together and, you know, mm. I say, please do the dishwasher. And she's like, she doesn't really like doing the dishwasher, but I said to find ways of enjoying it. And whenever she does it now, I just hear her singing. She's singing to herself and <laughs> going on, and she's finding a way to enjoy doing her chores in the house. So, um, it's important to find 
repetition tasks. You know, some 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 of the very enlightened individuals go take um, packing jobs at a factory mm-hmm. or washing dishes. You know, you've often heard of people washing dishes and getting enlightened. Um, but it's it's about just doing something repetitive in a loving way with the loving thoughts. Oh yeah, I is, mean, is, is washing very dishes. powerful. That's one of my favorite ways to release stress, actually. Mm. Mm. You know, just to let go. I'm, I know I'm out of alignment. I know my vibration's not in a good place. I know I want to shift it. Go wash some dishes. I guarantee 15 minutes later, I'm feeling better. Plus, the dishes are washed. Yes, I know. <laughs> and it's always nice to see a tidy room and, and, and right, clean, right. clean things. And, oh. So uh, Funny stuff. By the way, the other Jeffrey, our regular um, live stream listener, Jeffrey Blagg, has also chimed in as opposed to Jeffrey Bose, the gentleman who's off in uh, the Himalayas, as I believe it's now called. Uh, but he, he shared a few things I wanted to bring into the, the conversation there. He says, first of all, I use Neville Goddard techniques to visualize environmental improvement. I know there are millions of people around the world working on these intense issues. Right now, I can visualize people clearing up beaches, planting trees, inventing sustainable p- products, etc. All that needs to be done is being done. Trust the universe for the big stuff as well as the little stuff. That's why we have think globally and act locally. Now, that's the first time I've ever heard that phrase, think globally and act locally, used in that method, in, mm, in that mm, particular mm, context. Mm. That, that's a great context. I like that yeah. one. Because that's focusing literally on what you want rather than, I don't like this other thing that's out there. There's one thing that I wanted to point out there is you use the word working hard on, I think. Mm. And I really want you to say working with fun and joy on. Replace that word hard because it just slows you down so much from getting what you want. I don't think he said work hard. I think what he said is working intensely. Intensely, that's the word I was looking for, yes. Or working on these, actually, no, actually he said working on these intense issues. So he was saying intense like issues, issues intense. Yeah. yeah. Which they're not. Well, Unless they you are make them you, so. Yeah, if you believe they are, then they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those people I was telling you about that I was reaching out to, it was very intense for them. There was no <laughs> doubt about the intensity. It was clear. <laughs> I, I do feel sorry when I have the SPCA guy come around looking for donations uh, to my door. <laughs> uh, well, what happens? Yes. Well, I, uh, I I ask him what he's asking for donations for, and he says, oh, well, the extinction of the planet, etc. So <laughs> we, we, we get to talk about... Um, <laughs> We get to talk about all, all the things he doesn't want, and I start pointing out that he should be focusing on the, on the new species that are coming out and the new things that are happening and the things that are going right. And uh, by the time we finish, he's running away from the door. <laughs> but if it's more it's enlightened a or not. Let me out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because they are so passionate about helping the animals, mm-hmm. etc., Oh, yeah. And if they're doing it from an aligned point of view, wanting to to save those because, you know, rhinos are beautiful creatures, um, then that's fine. But if they worried about the extinction rather than focusing on the other angle of the thrivingness of them, then, you know, and it's, it's a very fine line. It's a very fine line. It and you will is. find... A lot of these guys are, are, are very much on the negative side or what they don't want side. I don't really like the word negative that much. Um, well, they don't like the poachers. They don't yeah. like, you know, they don't like, they don't want. They, uh, they, they definitely know what they don't like. But, but as you're pointing out, if you try to get them to talk about what they do like, the, the, this is the part that fascinates me. You, you have somebody who's coming at you with what they don't like, and then you ask them, well, tell me what you do like. And you might even get them to actually say one or two things mm-hmm. that they like, and then within seconds they're back to what they don't like. Mm-hmm. And it, it's almost reactive. It's almost a, a built-in subconscious program. Why well, should it probably is a built-in subconscious program playing? Well, it's a, it's a social act of vibration, isn't it? You've got these news media guys going out, scouring the planet for all the bad things that have happened, throwing it into your your life, and you think that the whole world is, is falling apart. So, you know. It's it's very easy for people to jump down the route of, um, you know, nothing's working well and everything's falling apart. And if people don't understand their own universes, they will under, they, they won't understand that everything's working beautifully in my world, mm-hmm. but it may be completely falling apart in somebody else's. Yeah. And it's the same world. 
and we're just looking at it from a different perspective and seeing <laughs> things completely differently. And then the reality of your thinking will manifest. That's an interesting thing, what you just said. And I think you said it very nicely, how, um, well, you have your world, I have my world, but it's the same world and that we're experiencing it differently. Um, and I say that's an interesting thing because there are a number of people within LOA circles who get all worked up about how, you know, this, this world is just my world. And in fact, I created you. I created everything that's in my world, including all the people that I interact with. They take it to such an extreme that there's really a, only a universe of, of one and there never was anybody else except for the one. And it, it almost makes me wonder, do they realize that they're participating in everybody else's world and that the other people are participating in their world? I'm not so sure. Right? I mean, it's one of those gray areas where, okay, so where does one definition begin and the other one end? But I so so where, where does Walt begin in my world and where, does, where do I begin in my world? Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. So, so let's play with that for a little while. Um, I only allow the part of Walt that I pretty much want to see into my world. Ah, that's good. Yeah. And that is about it. And that's the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. The degree to which they want to allow another world into their world. But again, it is purely my choice. I can turn the camera off and not see Walt's <laughs> world anymore. Okay. Or we can do it like a four-year-old does. Right? Yeah, you can't see me. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it really is up to the individual what they want to do. Now, some people will say, no, but you're coerced and forced into a point of view. And you realize that the only way any of those coerced people ever get out of their point of view is when they change their point of view, not mm. when the circumstance, well, the circumstances don't change until they change. And it, it really is quite a scary thing. You start realizing that, shit, I created these endless failure relationships. I created this lack of money. I created this shitty boss. I created these crap jobs and the one after the other after the other. And you start becoming, maybe sometimes, you know, maybe even I did, you start becoming angry with yourself and saying, yeah, I'm a very shitty idiot, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> why, why do I do this to myself? You know, mm -hmm. it takes a long time before you even get to that stage. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's almost advanced. Yeah. <laughs> it really and, is. And, and then you start knocking yourself a little bit about, over that whole thing. Yep. And um, and then eventually you see, oh, my gosh, but it was actually all perfect because if I didn't get knocked like that, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be on this podcast. Mm. I wouldn't be helping other people in, 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 in a way that is not necessarily to help other people. It's because I enjoy doing this so much. <laughs> and I don't care if you get it or not, guys. <laughs> And uh, so sometimes I get the people saying, oh, you don't care. I say, I don't really care if you get it or not, but I care intensely if I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's really selfish. I said, wow, what's the greatest gift you can give anybody in the world? And then they stuck because nobody's really thought of that question very much. And then I say, well, don't you think giving your own happiness is one of the greatest gifts? And most people will generally agree with that. Mm-hmm. And then you say to them, well, isn't that a really selfish endeavor? Mm. Keeping yourself happy? <laughs> well, there's always a surefire way. If, if you're uncomfortable with the, the whole concept of selfishness, you can buy into something like that. And then you can say, yeah, but at least I'm not narcissistic. Because that, that's like the politically correct way to say, don't be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, narcissistic sounds such a great word. <laughs> Sticking to the narcissism. It's a funny thing also when you're talking about any of these issues, usually political issues, where people are struggling, struggling and fighting and fighting and struggling. There, the, there are two interesting facts that I in, inevitably notice in any situation like that. The first one being how rarely they win. Usually they never win. Mm. Occasionally they might be able to dredge out a win that you know they basically struggle to get past the finish line. And the second is they don't notice the fact that they didn't win, <laughs> that they never <laughs> win. They continue to just keep. You have to fight the fight. You have to struggle. 
Never mind that you've never won that way. You have to do it anyway because that's how, that's the only way that change has ever happened in this world. That, that's the, have, have you noticed, Walt, they say, not fight the fight, they say fight the good fight. The, the good fight, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've got that contrast they're playing fighting and good. <laughs> yep. One of the uh, best ways I know to, uh, to clarify what that means, at least this is how I did it for myself, was recognizing the relative lack of value of good and bad, of positive and negative, how, how completely help, unhelpful they are in terms of understanding what's going on. They kind of just get in my way. And once I got them out of the way, I, all of a sudden everything became so much more clear because now I wasn't trying to make them fit into uh, an ethical bindery of some kind. Well, the whole thing, well, good and bad is very important to me, what I believe. Okay. But what you believe is good and bad for me has got no consequence on my life. Well, this is true, yes. <laughs> but I'm kind of there is to the next level where good and bad, I could care less about what's good or bad because even if it's good for me, I, don't, I still don't care. It's, it messes me up in the thinking, so I just get rid of it. <laughs> no, no, I'm very clear about what I like and what I don't like. <laughs> oh, I like that, yes. <laughs> what's but, between good and like? Hmm. Oh, I think there's a big difference. I think there's a big difference. <laughs> okay. Because I think the difference is that good is like with a moral component. Like is just an expression of preference. I prefer this. But so, good so is, you're, you're I prefer looking, this, and it's the right way to look. <laughs> you're looking in terms of like being what you perceive is correct, and you're looking at good as the collective seeds. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but I understand why you see it like that. I don't even think of it as correct, but I figure it as selective. Mm. Because I don't think that, that just because I select something that makes it correct, it just means I selected it. Mm. Like, I like it. Okay. I don't need any more justification. I don't have to make it correct. Good. I don't have to make it right. <laughs> I don't have to make it good. It's just I selected that one because I like it. I enjoy that. Mm. You know, if you don't enjoy it, well, there's a coffee shop down the road. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese it and enjoy it. I love that segment. What is it? Cheese it and enjoy it. Cheese it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I can get that one. Yeah. It's, it, it's fascinating, particularly in times like these, because there is a lot of angst about stuff going on in the world. And I hear it a lot these days from a lot of different people. Um, now I w don't complain about that because I know I'm attracting it. I often attract it deliberately. Um, but nevertheless, it's out there. It's quite a bit that's mm -hmm. out there. And, and I, I think I was wondering for the longest time why I was attracting it so much. Now I think I know why, at least to some extent. I'm, I, I, it's kind of like what we talked about earlier. You said, I keep doing the same show over and over again. I keep saying the same things over and over again. Why do I do that? I'm probing. I'm experimenting. I'm testing this whole LOA theory. I'm exploring it. I'm seeing how it interacts. I'm playing with it and saying, you know, I keep poking at that and I keep getting this result. Okay, now I've got some information there. You know, that's what it is. It's just, I, yeah, sure, I know the simple thing over and over again, but nevertheless, I'm building my understanding of it. I'm building, mm -hmm. I'm building my attachment to it, really. It's, it's quite interesting because you're talking about how you draw it so much to you. When I'm focused on so many, so many different things and I'm really enjoying them and all the rest of it, that, that world which you say has come to you never comes to me. I because you could care less see, about it. <laughs> I don't see hide or hair of it. I, it's, it's often, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't even, I, I struggled to even understand that you, it happens to you. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you know, it just hasn't happened for me for so long that, that, <laughs> It still happens with other people like that. Okay, yeah, that must do. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, you, you, you kind of really do start living in your own world. So. Absolutely, yeah. And, and you do understand that what you're vibrating out, you're going to draw those people to you. Mm -hmm. And you start loving it because I've now raised my vibration, so I'm going to get higher vibration people to me in general. You can have low days, you know, higher days. So it's uh, it's fun because sometimes I go out to the club and I say, today I'm just going to have so much fun just getting in the car, driving and to the club, and I'm just putting on the best music, and I'm just going to, you know, everything's going to fall into place. And I remember driving and 
getting in one of these moods and I, I looked up and there's this, you know, these white vans and, and you know, these guys are usually in a rush and <laughs> not happy and <laughs> driving people off the road. This guy was beaming at me from ear to ear and I was Ooh. beaming back at him and it was like, oh, there was no reason for it whatsoever. But, you know, it just felt so good. I was in such a high place that I found the right person at the right time and we were beaming at each other. It was just, it was just so cool, man. It's just. And, you know, when I got to the club, I had all the right people, right people, uh, fun, happy people to bounce around with um, mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. And it was just it was just so good when you're really on that high and then nothing can touch you besides other high things. <laughs> and uh, you're just bouncing around on all these good things. And, yeah, of course, you come down here and there. And, you know, that's okay too. And you start realizing that all of it's okay. And mm. you stop, stop worrying about the ups and the downs. You start focusing a little more on, oh, it's down, so I can greater clarity in the up. And then you're focusing more on the up and more the up comes. And, you know, it's just kind of the way I understand it's the universal law of attraction. And I'm clear about how it works. And I'm just happy about it all. And I'm just going to bring my happiness to the table. I'm going to share it with everybody. And, you know, that's the greatest gift I can give everybody. What else can I do, you know? Um, so if you, if you understand that whole thing about giving your happiness to other people, happiness is a high vibration. So what you're doing from an LOA, more technical point of view, is you're giving them a high vibration. Now, mm -hmm. if you're giving somebody a high vibration, they have two options. They can either rise to it or vanish out of that vibration. Mm -hmm. And if you don't come down to theirs, that is the only options they have. I love the example of the white van, um, in part because for – my wife's gardening business, we drive a white van. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but also because, I mean, I, I can kind of imagine what you're describing in terms of, well, you know how all the white vans are always, they're crazy drivers and all that. I, we don't experience that. At least I don't experience that. But it's mm -hmm. a great example of what you just talked about a moment ago, about it's how a, in that perception in, that, that you, you've kind of built up for yourself over time, you had this perception that white van drivers were crazy drivers. And then you also had the experience of – you were raising your vibration deliberately. You were getting into a really good place. And all of a sudden, crazy white van drivers were turning into happy, nice white van drivers. And that Precisely. experience, mm. that experience of seeing that shift happen because you made a shift and making the connection, that's the best connection in the world. That's where, for me anyway, that's where I do my best learning when I realize, wow, I did that. Mm. I did that by shifting me. What a great thing. I learned that. I got it. I got one more piece of data to just kind of fill in the gaps. That's fabulous. I love it. Yeah, I, th I think what Abram says again and again and again at the beginning of almost every seminar probably needs to be said on podcasts again and again. And, of course, we love <laughs> saying things again and again, so we're going to say it again. You are non-physical energy before you come into this physical universe. So mm -hmm. I ask people that question. I stopped them right there. I said, do you believe you were – non-physical or energy or something non-physical before you came to the physical universe. And most people will say to me, yeah, I suppose so. I don't really know what else to think, do you? Right. So <laughs> Lacking data. Um, yeah, lacking data. Um, yeah, I suppose I was not physical before I came into physical. I mean, it makes <laughs> sense. So you get them to agree that they were non-physical before they came to the physical. And then they say to them, well, we kind of know that the non-physical is, I don't know, we, 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 do, do we have any data on it? This is the big thing. The big, the big mysteries, almost every mystery law of attraction has eliminated for me on the physical realm. Mm. The only mystery left after you've studied the law of attraction is only one left, and that's the non-physical. Or you could say the only mystery left is God. Okay. Or source or however you wish to describe it. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you're you non-physical before you come to the physical, and the non-physical you wants to play in the physical universe because it wants to expand the whole, not just itself. So it's not – you didn't come here for an egotistical Louis is going to do it all and save everything. So you just came here to help – be another part of the expansion of the whole. So you came here to play with the contrast because if you don't have the contrast, you can't expand. So you start realizing that the non-physicals take on the physicals and they combine together, non-physical and physical, 
to play the game of vibrational interpreting machine, perceiving, knowing what you don't want, knowing what you do want. Now, w- w- when I was younger and I was studying the spiritual world, I understood that the contrast was what it was all about. I knew that if there was no light, there'd be no darkness. If there was no valley, there'd be no mountain. I, you know, if there was no up, there'd be no down. It just all made complete sense to me, but I didn't know how to transfer that incredible understanding at the time into the human experience mm-hmm. until Abram came along and said, you know, you don't want a better idea what you do. And it was like, Oh my God, I've always known the contrast was so important, but I couldn't relate it into the human experience. So when we keep on saying, and you know, what you don't want you know, a better idea what you do want. It's not a glib thing. It is, it is a profound understanding of how to translate the contrast into the human experience. That's true. Yeah. That, that, that concept of light and dark, black and white, um, is and isn't, you know, opposites. Uh, that concept of opposites, like you say, is one that we can have a hard time applying to human experience if we've been thinking about it purely in the abstract, which is what we tend to do. As yes. Well. Yes. about this stuff. We tend to think about stuff abstractly. But, okay, well, now do I, how do I apply it to the fact that I have to go to work or go to school or deal with mm-hmm. my wife or whatever? Well, now all of a sudden we lose our clarity because we don't have a completed model in place. Yeah, and That's exactly what Abraham gave us. He gave us a completion of the model. Um, but more than that, it, it, Abraham also gave us the opportunity to start filling in more of the model ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's I think it's very much talking so. about with the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. exploring the contrast thing that, you know, doing this world with everybody else, all participating in doing this world thing. Well, we're all, we're, we're building it. We're, we're, we're filling in the gaps. We're, we're, we're molding the little pieces We're we're, we're taking this, this conceptual structure and fleshing it out. And that fleshing out process is life. Yeah. The fascinating thing to me, which I never quite understood before was that, I don't know, I'm going to use the word millions for arbitrary, arbitrary um, quest to try and understand the kind of numbers, but the non-physicals take those non-physical who have taken on a physical body and look through our eyes, the physical eyes, to experience the contrast even though they didn't take on a body. So they're all around us, all these non-physicals are... Or they can't not be around us because we're all one. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they choose to look through our eyes to feel what we feel so that they can also experience the contrast, even though they're not taking on personally a physical body, but they're all around us. And that's why we can tap into different ones. And that's why people talk about angels and mm-hmm. masters and all these other kind of things, because you can tap into that whole field that's out there. And what it, that field is, it's a vibration. So you can tap into Mozart vibration. You like his music. You've got to understand Mozart and everything it is. And you raise your vibration to who Mozart was. That maybe is not necessarily good enough. But if you can actually tap into who Mozart now is in the non-physical, you can literally start communicating with Mozart. It's always been a bit of a, a an image for me imagining how that relationship between non-physical and physical is just along the lines you just described um, in that if you have all these non-physical beings or this field of non-physical source energy observing and vicariously uh, participating through others in what's going on here on earth, it's almost like we here in the physical world are on the field in a stadium and they're all in the stands, Mm -hmm. right? And, and that's what Abram says. They're always rooting for you, and they're always on your side. And they're always yeah. keeping positive, and they'll never come down to your level. And there are times when I've, I've said to myself, I really don't want to have anybody in the stands. I'm trying to do something very quiet and private here. So guys, just <laughs> take the crowd away for a bit. You know, but and, and then I imagine that if you have that, that intent clear in your mind of what you want, not what you don't want, mm. it'll happen. Just it like does, that. yeah. It's, it's actually when I do my best concentrating <laughs> because I'm focusing on what it is I want to focus on. Yeah. Um, to, uh, to take it one step further, one of the, uh, going, going back, let's go back to uh, the, the can, can we replace that? Can we replace that one step further to greater clarity? Okay. Greater clarity works. Mm. 
Um, so for greater clarity, go back. let's go back to the model of the political activist that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And that political activist is really, really focused on what they don't like to the point of exclusion about what it is that they do like. Mm-hmm. And it raises an, a few interesting questions in my mind, but the, but the most interesting question is would they notice if something that they liked actually happened? And I'm not so sure they would. Mm, they're so far in the, the negative, they probably wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that will happen to them is if you are, no matter what the subject, if you're focused consistently and focusedly on what you don't want, you will start destroying your physical body. You will start seeing lions. You'll start seeing aging. You'll start seeing different failures of different organs. You'll start seeing cancer, arthritis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, start to manifest in that individual. Um, it's quite interesting how when you look at an individual that their body is very much a reflection of their yes. thoughts. <laughs> it's true. It's but true. It I, I notice that by looking in the mirror every day. So. <laughs> in fact, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm trying to change the, what I'm noticing into something that I would prefer to notice. That's actually the bigger challenge. That is brilliant, you know. And it is that visualization that will help you more than anything mm-hmm. to look younger, feel younger, and be younger, and healthier and happier, et cetera. And it works. It works. It works. It works. Every once in a while, I get a, uh, enough momentum, I guess. I'm not sure what to call it. Enough, enough oomph. I get enough desire going to go stand in front of a mirror and see if I can look in that mirror and actually see myself in that younger form with the smooth skin and the no lines and the dark hair and all that other stuff. And most of the time, I can't pull it off. But every once in a while, for like that split second, I get that image. And then it snaps back to what I'm seeing the rest of the time. But I, I, I realize that on those those very small instances where I'm actually getting it for a second, that's about a thousand times better than where I was a year ago. Like, oh my God, I actually got that far. <laughs> so, so Walt, why why would you want to go from I'm going to use the emotional scale focusedly negative to focusedly positive? Why don't you just visualize a few extra gray hairs? <laughs> Because it's much more fun to try, much more fun to try to go after the really hard one. <laughs> it's true, it is. That's part of this no. drama thing we're all into. We love drama. We are dramatic actors in a dramatic world. Mm. No, I, I find that with my physical body. Um, I, if I even start talking about the things that I'm even dealing with now, um, so much fun. So I've talked about it before, this urinary tract infection thing. So it's gone from my kidney down to my scrotum area. And um, it, it's kind of very much alive for me and all the rest of it. But um, just having shifted it from the one place to the other, which has been there for years, I realized later after the fact mostly mm-hmm. because of its manifestations. Um, it, it, you're... I'm, I'm now playing with something that I can feel and touch, and I'm so enjoying it that I've said to numerous people who said other things to me, like, um, you know, I've said, like, I'm really enjoying playing with this. And they said, well, don't get too involved with playing with it because you might have it for a long time. And, and there's a truth in that. Um, there is. That there is. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with something which I can actually feel and touch now energetically, um, and it's very, very distinct. Okay. Um, and it's not causing me too much problems in any shape or form, except that I'm very aware of it. And I'm aware that when I kind of get rid of it, mostly that I have more energy. When it comes back, I lose a little bit of energy and it's a, it, it's, it's a play going on there. And I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I, I've often said to you, I really enjoy being sick and it's pretty damn true. Um, <laughs> the only thing that I really get a bit annoyed with, which I, I can't cope with very easily is a headache. So, Mm. I just take a paracetamol and go to sleep and it's all, <laughs> all, all over in the morning. And so, you know, that doesn't bother me too much either. But so it, it really becomes quite fun playing with the health contrast for me because I'm supremely confident now because of the proving my eyesight by more than half, getting rid of a pigeon chest, uh, getting rid of all my back problems, um, aligning my whole body to almost perfection, uh, you know, 
these glasses are, are so thin. I used to have Coke bottles, you know. Mm, like, yes. Um, and, and, and it was just been such a, such a fun journey improving them and improving them. These glasses are even half my original strength, so the screen it, looks a bit blurred. It's almost like <laughs> we're going to the, the mental gym to, to work out. And we're, we're just doing this mental bodybuilding, mm. in a sense. We're, we're building up our, our, our ability to focus on what it is that we like more often and to take our attention away from what we don't like more often. That's the bodybuilding aspect of it. Mm. You know? and, and it's the same thing as going into a physical gym to do physical bodybuilding. It has rewards in it every step of the way if you're willing to go do the work and, and, and do it. Now, for me... Physical bodybuilding, I really have no interest in, so I just don't even go to the gym. But I love the mental bodybuilding part, mm. you know. So that's where I do my 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 gym work is on the mental part. Well, you, you're the rare individual because a lot of people like building the body and absolutely, uh, especially the 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 guys I meet in the sauna. Um, they a lot of them are really into the physical body and and the exercise of it and all the trimmings and stuff that goes on with all that sure. um multifaceted devices and, and techniques um which you can all argue about yes so <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 exercise the physical body then you exercise the emotional body um uh, in all different shapes and forms and then how many people exercise that mental body it's not that many Probably not. I've never taken a census on it, but no, it's mm. probably not that many. But I like it. Yeah. No, it. no, 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 no. It's when you think your thoughts create your reality. Hmm. Actually, if I just think my body's getting better, it's going to get better. It actually is. If you really believe it. And that's the plan with it. Part. Thing that will stop. That's the plan with it. Part. I mean, you were talking about the urinary tract. I do the same thing with my knees. I, I've told a story about how I healed my knees, but the interesting thing is every once in a while, one of them likes to act up every once in a while. Like one of the ligaments just wants to come back. In fact, I had a day recently where all of a sudden it was practically freezing up. I said, oh, okay, focusing on the wrong thing for too long here. <laughs> but I'm enjoying the, pra the the pull of it, the push and pull of it, mm -hmm. the, uh, literally stretching the ligament, literally stretching my mind where that ligament is associated and Working it and, and flexing it and making it more flexible over time mentally and physically at the same time and seeing how the more that I work on it mentally, the more it heals physically. Mm -hmm. And that when I don't work on it mentally, I can flex it all I want to physically and it doesn't get any better. What Walt and listeners, take note of what Walt is saying. You know, it is so important. Get the mental thoughts about your body and your yeah. health. Get them focusing on what you would like it to be like not where it is because we tend to run away from that aspect we want to we want it to act more like a magic wand where i think about it once and i'm done and then it just happens and then we get frustrated when it doesn't just happen because i went back to focusing on all the things i didn't like about it yeah we, we want it to just happen for us without realizing, no, we're the ones who are here to do that play, to play mm -hmm. with that stuff and to learn how it works and to develop those mental muscles, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They're what it's all about. Uh, by the way, before uh, we run out of time, I want to make sure that I get our promotional messages out there because we are on a path to build up our listenership. Uh, also, I want to... Uh, add a second message for the day anyway, maybe for the week, to encourage people who are on Facebook to join our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Law of Attraction Pivot Pals. And the point of the Law of Attraction Pivot Pals group is for people who want to do what we're talking about here, basically having a space where we can safely and, and supportably with each other uh, share our dreams, share our, our fantasies, share the things that we're working on trying to attract and then encourage each other on them and build them out and make them detailed and really, really focus on them in a big, big way. So if you'd like to uh, be a part of that, just go to Facebook, do a search for Law of Attraction Pivot Pals and join the group and I'll let you in and you can join us on our daily quest to build up our visualizations and our imaginals. Um, well, Walt, Walt, Walt will give you 14 seconds to tell you what went wrong. No more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no, we don't time it. No, we don't do that. 
<laughs> we just yeah, simply encourage we you. Should so, do. <laughs> so, so what's the part that you did like? I, I, I figure if I can get them focusing on what they did like, mm-hmm. that's a victory. I don't really care what the time frame is. <laughs> Um, but uh, in addition, of course, make sure that you're subscribed to LOA Today, which uh, so many of you are. But for those who are new to the podcast or maybe you haven't taken the leap and subscribed yet, please do become su- a subscriber. Very simple to do. Just go to LOAToday.net and right at the top of the page, you will see instructions on exactly how to do that. It takes about a click, maybe two. And after that, you are subscribed and all of our shows are coming right to your smartphone or other device every single time that we publish them. And also check us out on YouTube because that's where we live stream to as we are doing the recordings, and so you can also see what we look like as we're doing this. You can see Louis's dark brown to black hair that he has maintained so beautifully with his thought process over the years. You mean with the camera? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great camera. I can tell you what model it is. <laughs> hey, you're the one who thought it up. That's the main thing. But please do become a subscriber. And by the way, that's one of our goals. Is uh, We're now closing in on 500 subscribers per episode. We're up around 475 right now. I'm closing in on 500. And the goal, the next big goal is 1,000 subscribers per episode. And I think we're going to get there really fast. So mm. that's another reason why I want you to be a, a subscriber. You help increase that number for every person who does that. So thank you to our, our regular subscribers, particularly those who have been with us for quite some time. We really appreciate you. But we also really appreciate all the new ones as well. And, uh, Louis, I know you appreciate it because that means you're going to have more and more opportunities to say the same thing over and over Over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I promise to do it in slightly different ways. (laughs) What's the challenge, isn't it? When you do a podcast like this, I mean, that's the challenge. You're always finding new ways to say the same thing, new ways to come at it, new ways to explore it. And the cool thing is, since it applies to everything in life, we're never going to run out of topics. Mm. Isn't that great? That is. Never run out of topics. <laughs> if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be able to do it five days a week. I'd be lost. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be swimming in the deep end without a, without a raft. I mean, it would just not be good. <laughs> yeah, so, I remember something my mentor said. I said to her, all these masters are saying the same things in all these different books. Mm. And she says, hey, if it works, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> and if that particular book is the one that works for you, then guess what? That's, That's the one. Well. <laughs> That's it, right there. For us, it's Abraham Hicks, and for me too, it's Neville Goddard and it's others. For you, it's, it's mainly Abraham and pivoting and focusing on what you want. But it doesn't matter what the source is. It doesn't make any difference. What's the one mm-hmm. that works for you? That's the one that works. Hopefully, part of what works for you is listening to the podcast here at LOA today. How's that for a final segue? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> I love that. So, you, anything uh, cool coming up this week, or anything you want? Any last thoughts you want to share before we sign off for the day? I just wanted to say to the listeners, create a fantastic week and look forward to catching up on you with you on Monday and carpe diem. What a great message. Can create a fantastic week. I love that. Mm. Very good. You ought to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. He already uh, does. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you much. Thank you, Jeffrey, for uh, your commentary as usual in the uh, live stream audience chat room. Thank you especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.